fine, ma'am. How are you? How are you ma I'm fine, thank you. So, how is everything going on? Everything yeah. is good. Nice, ma'am. Ma Finish with your exams. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma right? Finished our exams. Okay, and then, what are you planning to do now? Planning to prepare for uh, competitive exams. Oh, very good. What will you do with these competitive exams? <laughs> to survive. <laughs> <laughs> to ah. get job. job. To get the job. <laughs> to get good job. To fulfill our basic okay. needs. Then after that. What will you do after the job? That to marry. <laughs> 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 to marry? No. Oh. Okay. okay. To get married. Oh. Then after marriage? <laughs> after marriage, children. <laughs> then? <laughs> <laughs> then we have to brought up. Bring. Uh, uh, we have to uh, brought uh, up the children. Okay. It's not brought up. It is to bring up the children. Okay. To bring up the children. Fine. So how is uh, the weather going on? Uh, weather is too hot, ma'am, to, to survive. To go out. Okay. Mm. Why to survive? No, ma'am. Why to only? Okay. These, uh, when you say to go out, to survive, to eat, to drink, to do, these things which are there, they all come under a category of a verb. Okay. And these verbs are called infinitives. So, if without this two, if you uh, have this, uh, the verb can't be uh, used in that manner. Of course, it doesn't tell the tense, but it just talks about the action which is playing the major role in that. Okay, right, Let's see. These things are called infinitives. Infinitives are verbs which take up to along with it. Okay. Verbs like to eat, to run, to read, to work, so, these words which are there, they all come under this category of infinitives. When I say infinitives, these are the kind of verbs which don't give you any kind of any, this don't tell you anything about any tense. These words, okay, or the infinitives, they don't give you any tense, they only go with the subject. Okay. Now, for example, so because they don't give any tense, these are called non-finite verbs. These are called non-finite verbs. When I say non-finite verbs, these verbs are the ones which are like they are open. If I say he, he reads the newspaper. And I say he reads the newspaper, reads, he reads. When I say reads, this one is coming as V1 S form of the verb. So, when I say V1 S form of the verb, this reads is used only with this he, he. right. If I use they, they read, they read, they read, they read the, newspaper. the newspaper. When I say this, they read the newspaper, read is coming as V1. This is going with this they. Okay? So, these verbs which are there, they are called finite verbs. Non-finite verbs are those which do not tell anything about the, this kind of tense. They are the same. They do not tell you anything about the tense. They are only used. Okay? So, how they are used, we will see. Now, these non-finite verbs are used in different forms. Non-finite verbs are used or these infinitives are used in the different ways. One, we can say they are used as the subject. When they are used as the subject, subject means the one who, who, works. Works. who, works. who works. The one who does the action is called subject. So, when I say two infinitives, two plus verb. Okay? So, when I say to err, is human. Err. Err means error. Error. Error, error. error means mistake. Yeah. To make a mistake or to commit a, uh, some, some mistake itself is human. We are not gods. We are humans. So, we are, we make mistakes and we learn from them. So, that is what is called to err is human. Here, to err to make mistake when I say to err is coming as the subject. Okay? Now, 
when I say this as a subject, this is occupying the position of the subject. This is an infinitive which is acting as the subject. Okay, right. Can anyone give one more example to this? Yes, yes, please. To find fault is easy. Right. To find fault is easy. So, which one is the uh, infinitive here? To, to find. find. To find. Okay. This becomes the subject here and to find fault is easy. Right. Can you give another example? I will give one. Yes. To work in hot sun is difficult. To work in the hot sun is difficult. Which one is the uh, subject to here? Work. To work. To work. Right. Can I give one more example? To prove oneself is very important. Mm. To prove oneself is very important. Which one is that? I will give one. Yes, please. Yes. To sleep without tan or AC in the summer is very difficult. Okay. To sleep, to sleep without without fan or AC in this summer is difficult. Hot sun I guess, so fine, I agree. Ah. Which one is the, uh, is the infinitive in that? To sleep. To sleep. Here yeah. in this one? To, to prove. prove. To prove. So here, now you got these examples. Okay? Now we can also say one more example, to create history. To create history is not easy. To create history is not easy. So, this is how you know. So, these are coming as the subjects. Okay? Any? Um, yes. After two work, uh, in the hot sun is what? It is another word? Yeah, that will be in the another word. Okay? Yes. But the main subject part is to work. To work. It is the subject. Right. These are nothing but they are adding some quality to all this. Okay? So, they are also adding something else to this. With if to work is difficult, also is possible. But where? To work in the in hot sun. Ah, in the hot sun. It is Where giving more information. Right. So, each one has got a different role to play. We will come to that at the later stage. Okay. We will see how these infinitives can be, uh, uh, can act as nouns and verbs, no, sorry, nouns as adjectives and adverbs and all. We will come to know that later. Okay. So, this is one. Yes. And one more doubt. On all the examples, after two, we are using V1 only. Mm. Why is that? Is because I, I told, no, we can't use that. See, we are using this one where you are talking of the verbs, right? And these verbs they always take up this two, right? And they do not decide the tense, okay? So, here when I use this to err, was human? No, this is a universal truth. This is uh, actually to err is human is a universal truth. It can also be uh, taken as uh, a kind of uh, we can say the uh, what is a proverbs. Okay, so proverbs and all they come only in the simple, in the, in the simple present. So that but means. in other cases, we there is a chance to no 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 never no here, to find fault to, was easy to to that here this one it was that you can change the tense this part of it this verb you can uh, change it okay what is it coming as now simple present is what, what is present. it coming as mm. as presently we are. I told, you, I told you, infinitives can't be used as the main verbs, main verbs, right? So, here, this is coming as a subject. Yes. Yeah. What is this now? Yeah. Verb. 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 So, verb, you can change that. Okay. okay. That's what I am asking. That you can say. This, this way, as a main verb, you can change the tenses. Verbs, you can change the tense. Here, when I say, this one you can't change. To err was human, you can't, because this is universal one. Here, to find fault? was easy fine it was to find fault with those people it was very easy we will say right that way we can go on clear right so here now we are we used as a subject right let's get into the next one as object so when you go as object so here we'll say birds love to sing they liked to play cricket huh so this is how you can you can use as an object to the verb so birds love to sing or they like to play cricket here you use this v2 form okay right 
she asked to leave she asked asked to leave to leave leave okay hmm. one more i chose to work i chose to work okay next i need to clean the house <coughs> i need to clean the house can you give an example try i speak to them i speak to them them is what pronoun them must so here it has to be a verb i will try mm, right so this is how it acts as the as the object okay so before uh, the previous one we tried as the two infinitive as the subject and now these are with the like the objects fine would you like to try hari prasad with any of these words you can use one more sentence i i need to give one more example yeah i need to give one more example good i need to give one more example good can you try with the same thing i chose to work with the same word chose can you i will choose to buy new i chose use the same thing because that will give you some 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 practice the same word i, I chose. chose to live like that only right i chose to live luxuriously okay mm i chose to play i chose to play right asked anything she asked to light? go out she she asked to buy new clothes she asked to buy new clothes okay she asked to buy also you can say hmm any other i like to sing songs i liked i like to sing songs okay so that this is how it is coming as the as the object. object okay right now what we'll do is we'll try out with the next one next category so the third category of it that we have is we have certain rules here okay they are called you'll have a subject here plus verb plus required noun plus infinitive so this is the the rule we can substitute some of the words into this if i use a word advise <coughs> can say i advised him to work i becomes your subject advise become the verb him becomes a required noun to work becomes the infinitive so this is how you will be using it allow you can say people are not allowed people becomes your subject this becomes your verb are not allowed to enter to enter the hall people are not allowed to smoke in public places our staff are not allowed without id card and prayer book to be prayed okay our staff our staff are not allowed without prayer book and id card our staff doesn't allow our staff doesn't allow to enter without prayer no. uh, uh, so we can say uh, when i say our staff doesn't allow okay at this in this i didn't add the required noun there okay so here our staff doesn't allow us as becomes your required noun 
uh, staff does not allow us to enter to enter without prayer book. Can you give some examples to this? What is the difference between those two? This is called the ah uh, here ah. Uh? There is an R there. Here people are ah. Uh. Here does not. Staff. Staff, staff we are treat, uh, treating as the singular, singular here. Staff might be we have plural. Many people are there, but still they are taken as a singular. So, here it is used as a singular. People, generally that itself is a plural form. So, we use are. So, in this I did not add any of the required noun, but here I added that noun. Okay. Can you give some examples of this? Yes. Yes. Madhu convinced me to quit the job. Very good. Madhu convinced 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 me to quit the, job. quit the job okay so madhu becomes your subject convinced becomes your verb me becomes your uh, required, required, required noun. noun required noun to quit becomes your infinitive yeah she encouraged me to she encouraged me to improve myself to improve myself improve to improve myself my language we will say ok my friend suggested me uh. to read well for examination my friend suggested me my friend suggested me to read well for the exam good so my friend becomes your subject suggested is the verb me becomes your required noun to read okay so this becomes your infinitive okay one more example last one the commander forced the soldiers to march in the rain okay the commander forced the soldiers to march in the rain ok. So, this is how it goes with this one, one kind of it where you have a subject verb required noun. So, that required noun is there. What will happen if that required noun is not there? If I say the commander forced to march in the rain whom? Yeah, okay. they don't know who. we don't know who it is. So their required noun is important. So it gives some clarity to the sentence. Ma'am, yeah. I have a doubt. Here suggested is we to write. Yeah. Then uh, what is the role of uh, to read? Already it is telling the tense. Simple past. My friend suggested. What is it acting as? It is not acting as a. No tense, right? It is only acting as an infinitive. That's it. Infinitives are they do not tell you anything about the tense, they only tell you they give they give some kind of a meaning we can say to the sentence. So, it that way because I already told you it does not give you any tense. So, that is how it will be right. One more example we will say one, uh, this one goes to verb plus that is subject plus verb plus optional noun ok optional noun plus infinitive ok verb plus optional noun plus infinitive here I say ask to this I can say they asked to leave whom not required they asked me to leave they asked him to leave they asked them to leave they asked us to leave it can be anybody. So, even without that I think we can just put it out over here ok. So, this becomes your option. Can you give some examples orally to this? They asked to study. They asked to study fine good. They asked you to learn the English language. Ok. Can you give with the word prepare? They prepared uh, to enter to enter a hall. 
they prepared to enter the hall okay they prepared to enter they prepared to enter okay fine any other i prepared to convince others okay they prepared to take the test okay they prepared to take the test so this is how it will be done okay we'll continue with this uh, with few more rules which are there we'll continue with that now listen to two people conversing with each other they discuss some important issue hi varsha hi manasi i like your salwar your dress sense is good thank you but what is dress sense dress sense okay so how can i tell you about dress sense see dress sense is the way that we present ourselves to other people okay so dress sense will include the kind of clothes that we are wearing but it also talks about the way we present ourselves how confident we look how neatly our hair is kept it also talks about how fresh our face looks also oh now dress sense is so important because it reflects the kind of person that you are ante however you are inside that will be shown through your dress sense okay. so it talks about your nature your mentality how your thought processes it talks about your culture and so many more things oh for example a person who likes to wear bright colored shiny flashy clothing they are probably open people who are very outward in their behavior a person who likes to wear soft colors pastel colors maybe they are soft natured people oh that is interesting to know can you tell me more about dress sense sure there is one more thing dress sense also reflects the culture that we follow and tells us a lot tells the other person a lot about your tradition okay you see india has so many cultures and traditions it has so many languages hmm. dress sense in india is as varied and diverse as the number of languages that we have for example when you have when you come to functions regular functions like marriages or housewarming functions you will see people in south india will mostly wear sarees or half sarees correct people in punjab will probably wear punjabi suits and people in uttar pradesh may probably wear lehengas or anarkalis so the dress sense that we conduct ourselves in is reflecting our nature so it is so important that we give that necessary importance to the way we dress and oh. in different situations okay so you need to be careful to dress exactly to the occasion is that what you are trying to say exactly you have to dress according to the occasion let me give you a few instances now when we go to school or when we go to college why are we going because we want to learn something we want to educate ourselves and make ourselves better so we have to dress in such a way where we do not distract ourselves or the people around us that is why we are advised to wear soft colors simple clothing like salwars or you know regular pants and shirts okay. so that we don't distract the people around us and all of us can focus on studying learning and improving ourselves this is why schools have a rule that the students must wear a uniform oh everybody is dressed the same way there is no difference so you don't are you are not distracted by the way your friends are dressed everyone can think about studying and learning exactly now you can also look at the concept of where you go for job interviews or when you are attending meetings now here you are asked to wear formal clothing true this is because when a person dresses formally they are showing seriousness in them they are showing that that dedication to the work that they are doing now when you go for a job interview you want to show the person who is interviewing you ante the interviewer that you are interested in this job you are dedicated to it and that you want to pursue this particular job opportunity so you have to show that seriousness which is why you are asked to wear formals 
even when you attend meetings you are showing that interest and that that sincerity to the work that has to be done so men will wear formal shirts formal pants with a decent shirt tucked in with a belt and maybe a tie also okay. they can also wear a blazer women have different kinds of formal wear they can wear sarees but remember the saree should not be bright like you wear for functions it should be a simple color maybe like the blue that you are wearing oh or the red color that you are wearing simple okay. colors pastel colors kind of sarees salwars also can be worn in a similar color sense but women also have the chance of wearing formal suits women can wear pants and t- shirt tucked in along with a blazer also now there is one more place that we can look at the dress sense i mentioned earlier about functions like marriage ceremonies housewarming functions over there everybody wants to celebrate a happy occasion everyone wants to be together and spread the joy so we will naturally dress in a festive manner we will wear bright shiny clothing which is loud very happy because we want to show others that we are celebrating now remember that i mentioned earlier dress sense is not only about the kind of clothes you are wearing hmm. dress sense also talks about how you conduct yourself how is your hair is it neat hmm. is your face fresh do you have any kajal do you have any powder on all of this also comes under dress sense okay now tell me how will it look if you come for an interview you wear nice clothing but you have not combed your hair and you don't put anything on your face and you look like you have come out of bed that will absolutely be inappropriate it will look very bad right absolutely. that is why when you wear a dress according to a, an occasion you should also make sure that you get ready in a nice way comb your hair nicely ladies you can leave your hair loose you can tie it up and men comb your hair nicely you can wear powder girls can wear kajal they can wear eyeliner they can wear lipstick whatever it is but make yourself look nice according to the dress that you are wearing mansi i am heading for my class now i think i am appropriately dressed yes you are okay mansi i'll see you later all the best bye bye well now listen to a story try to observe the vocabulary and the grammar in it the three brothers the wife of the headman of the village died soon after giving birth to a baby boy so in her, her delivery she gave birth to a baby boy and died the headman was inconsolable but was persuaded by his family and friends to marry again so that the child would have someone to look after him so he was in a great grief but his members of the family forced him to marry again so that the woman whom he could marry will definitely look after the child so that the boy wouldn't be orphaned fortunately his second wife turned out to be a large hearted and sensible woman who gave the child all the love and care he would have received from his own mother fortunately the woman whom he married turned out to be a very kind hearted woman she looked after this baby wonderfully uh, just like his own mother in the course of the years she presented the headman with two more sons but her affection for the oldest never diminished means she looked after the eldest son equally with her own sons so it the love towards the first first boy did not come down it did not diminish she treated all the three boys alike and the two younger ones never realized that they had a step brother so no one in the family i mean none of the two boys knows that he is their step brother when the headman passed away the widow entrusted the responsibilities of the household and the fields to the eldest son so she gave the power to the eldest son he managed them so well that the family prospered so soon the family started getting uh, riches 
so they became very wealthy because the eldest one did his duties promptly this made the neighbors envious so naturally the neighbors were jealous of this family one day one of them told the widow's sons the truth about their eldest brother and advised them to drive him away from the house lest he should deprive them of their share of their father's property means he would grab a whole property and he would never uh, let you enjoy the property so better uh, send him away from the home this was the advice given by the neighbors the boys were shocked at the revelation because they did not know till then that they had a step brother so for the first time they heard it from the neighbors and were frightened by the prospect of losing their share of the property they decided to murder him they actually they, they actually thought of sending him away but instead they thought of killing him too when they told their mother about what they planned to do she said to them don't bloody your hands i will get rid of him for you that night when everybody was asleep she suddenly jumped out of bed and started shouting snake snake where where did you see it mother asked the eldest son getting up from his mat alas said the widow i saw it disappearing into your stomach can anyone believe this but the eldest son who loved his mother a lot and adored her and respected her believed the young man turned pale from that day on he lost all his appetite for food and would lie on his mat the whole day long soon he became so weak that he could not even sit up on his mat so he became day by day he started deteriorating and he he started becoming weak and weak so how weak he became he could not even sit on his mat the neighbors rejoiced and took advantage of the situation they built a wall across the widow's courtyard and claimed a part of the house as their own in the fields they shifted their boundaries to enclose large portions of the widow's lands so when the eldest one was not there in the field and he was not moving in the house too the neighbors started taking advantage they erased the boundaries and they started encroaching the land of this widow the younger sons could not deal with the situation and one day they said to their mother if our elder brother was not bedridden such terrible things wouldn't have happened to us then they realized the fact that the eldest son was the actual fortune of the family because he used to manage everything single handed the widow kept quiet but in the dead of the night she again started shouting snake snake everyone woke up where where did you see it mother asked the eldest son weakly his voice was very weak because he became very weak son i saw it coming out of your stomach replied the woman it disappeared into the darkness from that day on the condition of the eldest son started improving soon he was able to walk into the courtyard where he saw new wall who has built this he thundered he he loudly asked who had built this the neighbors came running and meekly pulled down the wall very humbly very politely they pulled down the wall because they were all afraid of this eldest son who was strong and who was powerful the following week he went to the family fields and seeing the new boundaries and shouted who has done this the neighbors trembled in fear and quickly vacated the land they had grabbed the land which they encroached immediately they pulled that fences out the widow and her three sons lived in peace and harmony ever after so 
Eli made the eldest son. Eli which the widow told made the eldest son weak. And another lie brought him back to his own power and strength. So this is how we always uh, see that mole, mountain out of mole. This is how we see the mountain out of mole sometimes. And we get afraid of for the smallest things too. And then we lose our confidence and we want to give, give up. But nothing is bigger than the fear which we have in our hearts. So we must have courage to face anything. Once we become weak and we just give up our acts and we don't feel like working further. So be brave and face your problems boldly. Don't, don't just look at the problems only, just look at the solutions. Thank you. parable that you are now you are going to listen to observe the words the structures etc good morning a very good morning welcome back to another episode of english for all in this segment we are going to listen to a small parable which is a podupu katha and see what moral we can learn from this parable varsha would you like to share it i would love to this parable is slightly interesting one. The story goes as, once upon a time, there was a beautiful cottage and there lived an old lady with two of her servants in that house. The old lady also possessed a hen. The hen would religiously crow at dawn every morning. The old lady would wake up and she used to rouse her servants also. The servants being very lazy, they did not like it. No matter how hard they tried, they wanted to sleep late in the morning till late in the morning no matter how hard they tried the old lady didn't let them do that she used to religiously wake them up on time and ask them to work every day this was their daily routine hmm. and the servants used to crib all the time they used to get irritated because they wanted to sleep and the old lady would wake them up so they sat and they thought i think this is happening because of the hen the hen always crows at dawn. It is only because of the crowing of the hen that the old lady is waking up at dawn and she is waking us up also. And I am not liking this. Why don't we hatch a plan and sell the hen? Yeah, so that there will be no hen to crow and we no will to wake, up, no wake, to wake us, us up. And we can sleep till late in the morning. Yes. So one day when the old lady was doing her own chores, 
the servants took the hen out of the house almost to the end of the city and sold it to a butcher and they came back and they were very happy with themselves that our plan was successful we happened to take the hen and sell it hmm. now there is no hen to crow and nobody to wake us up yes because the lady is also very old and she also would not remember to wake her to wake us up and finally they went to bed on that day but they were wrong here's what happened when they were asleep in the middle of the night the old lady came to their room and she started banging the door she said wake up it is time the boys woke up both the lazy servants they were looking at each other they said it is only midnight it is 3 o'clock why should we wake at this time why should we wake up at this time and then they went they opened the door they saw the old lady she already had work for them she said why don't you start working yeah. and they were surprised they said it is 2:30 or 3 in the morning why should we get up and start working now hmm. It is too early. It is midnight still. Yeah. The old lady said, "There is no hen to crow. How should I know whether it is morning, whether it is dawn, or whether it is midnight? So get up and start working." And the servants had to get up and start working. That is when they kicked themselves and they said, "If and only if we would have left the hen all by itself, at least rather than waking up at midnight, waking up at dawn was far better." better. This is where it happens that worse solutions just worsen the problems even more. So what we learn from here is don't unnecessarily lead each problem to a wrong solution and give it your own wrong take on it because in any time you're taking a negative sense as to whatever is happening and you try to deal with that problem in a negative way a wrong thought a wrong solution will only worsen the problem even more because you're not seeing the perspective of it each person should wake up on time should complete their work on time and sleep on time and that is what the poor old lady also wanted to do but unnecessarily these lazy servants in the view of being too lazy they only wanted to worse in the they only wanted to kick the hen out of the house and sleep till late in the morning exactly. but instead it just worse in their own problems exactly that makes sense that was a nice story thank you so much for sharing it with us i think we've learned something good out of it absolutely and thank you all for watching this